Welcome to the Realty Plus Real Talk series, where we talk to industry experts for their honest views and opinions and real facts and figures. I'm Sapna Srivastava, editor of Realty Plus magazine. And today we have with us, who's known as Builder Extraordinaire, and rightly so, for the landmarks that he has created in his more than 40 years of real estate journey. We have with us Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, who's the founder and managing director of Hiranandani Group, and he is also the national president for SOHM and Naredco. Dr. Hiranandani, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hiranandani, in fact, in the last few months, we have seen many new normals, as people are saying, you know, coming up, whether it is staying at home quite a lot, online education, working from home, or in terms of real estate, online sales, virtual tours. Which are these trends you feel are going to stay with real estate forever beyond this pandemic and how developers are going to restructure their business? I think uh, every situation merits change. And I think uh, it's a good thing that uh, such a bad situation also is an opportunity because we certainly have come to learn that a lot can happen through the digital media, which we never imagined could happen before. So whether it is, as you said just now, online education, which we are doing rapidly across the entire education campus, uh, whether it is in schools, whether it is in colleges, whether now we are going to do certificate courses, we are running postgraduate courses, all this education is also online which was never possible before. It would also mean that you can extend ex education to the poorest of poor at very low cost, and it will be possible to reach the villages, uh, the homes of people, which earlier they didn't know how to send the teachers there. So now that is possible. And similarly, if you look at the real estate as a business, obviously the home is real and can't be made digital, so a person really does it. But what has happened? Look at the advantage. People have suddenly learned to value their homes. Earlier, they would rapidly run out of their homes early in the morning, come late at night, use it almost to sleep, etc., and maybe over weekends and holidays. But in reality, today, it's been a place where you, you wake up, you exercise, you cook, you go to sleep, you, uh, you work for your office, you connect through the digital media, all that. Hence, the amount of space required at home is actually required to be increased. A lot of people, whether both the spouses are working, suddenly they need more space for themselves. So people find that they need more kind of facility in their house, which they didn't need earlier. So today, for example, you're working from home, uh, obviously, and if two people or three people are working from home or studying from home, more space is required because that's how the digital media will work from there. So A, the space required for homes, for people who are going to work from home, whether temporarily or in future, certainly more space is required. On the other hand, the commercial spaces, a lot of statements have now come about wherein the companies are very happy to let people work from home. And uh, they say, all right, if you can work from home and efficiently so, please do so. Then don't occupy any office space for us. So to them, that's a cost saving as far as the, the companies and corporates in their offices are concerned. So there are obviously going to be people who will reduce the office space requirement for the purposes of people who are doing their commercial business. But I don't think it's going to be prevalent everywhere. It's not possible for everybody to work from home and be able to do it, but many will continue to work from home after this. So you will see these changes taking place in the future. And some of it, some of the people who work from home will continue to work from home. And they will certainly realize that there is an option. The previously never people thought there was this option was available. Like we are talking on the webinar now, was this an option available? answer is yes. Did we ever use it? No. So that is the change which has taken place. And I'm talking to the prime minister, I'm talking to the finance minister, I'm talking to the PMO office, I'm talking to the reserve bank governor, I'm talking to the commerce minister, I'm talking to the chief minister Maharashtra. We have inaugurated a university, we have inaugurated our data center. All these things have been done 
on the webinar, so digitally. So I think that change is definitely going to stay. To what extent? I can't say. But to some extent, definitely. To a greater extent, doubtful, but may happen. Okay, that, that's right. So how are developers going to tweak their products accordingly? Are we going to see a smaller room or an office room now being built in a residential property? Are we going to see a quarantine, probably a medical, like we have a clubhouse in a complex? Are we going to see a medical facility also developers putting up in a complex? Any changes you know, from the real estate that we are going to see? So I think what you said is definitely going to happen. People are going to ask for that extra room. So, uh, and it is already happening. People are already looking for upgrading their houses to one bedroom extra or at least one room extra. And in some cases, they even want two rooms extra. So, because more than one family member requires to be connected to the net and they just can't uh, do with just the space that they have today. And they never thought of increasing the requirement of space. So, yes. Residential space demand is increased. Commercial play demand has not yet contracted, but it could in the future. But the contraction in commercial demand is not dependent on the thought of work from home. It is more dependent on the GDP growth of India. If GDP of India grows, the growth for office space will still continue to do, even if you do work from home. But if the GDP does not grow, which is what is expected this year, there may be a contraction in commercial demand for one year. But the moment GDP grosses again, three and four and 5%, when it happens, maybe a year from now, or maybe 15 months from now, uh, commercial demand will again creep up. Somebody wants an office space. Uh, the people who retire from work, then they want to create their own offices. So they buy a small office for themselves. They're not interested. Not everybody wants to work at home from home because they don't find it convenient to work from home. They think they are more efficient when they get into the office place and interact with people. Number two, there you have to deal with customers. Many times a personal one-to-one -one requirement is there to deal with customers. So you want to make sales. People want to come themselves to the sales site. So you can't contract every commercial demand. And that's not going to happen. Okay, so that's a good news. So it's, it's just a short phase for commercial uh, properties, but it's going to bounce back very soon. In fact, there is there has been another very interesting development, which is the REITs. The first REIT of India performed. In fact, it outperformed BSE Realty Index. Second REIT has been announced. 100% FDI in completed projects has been improved. What these developments you feel signify for real estate? I think uh, REITs has been introduced uh, uh, some time ago. However, uh, there was not enough product coming into the marketplace. So the first one we got from Bangalore, now we have got it from Mumbai. So I think it's a good sign that investment is coming through the REIT route. The REIT is a very important conservative real estate investment route. And lots of people and institutions are very happy worldwide to invest into REITs because it's more a secured investment uh, uh, because it gives you 90% of the money which is received from the rentals is given out over there. And uh, you have to substantially have all the properties developed in order to add it on to the REIT or close to REIT. So all these factors will create a new resource availability of capital for the purposes of funding commercial real estate. And uh, people say it will happen in residential, it has happened in Japan, it has happened in America, but it's not yet popular enough all over the world. So residential real estate REITs could also happen, but that is only after the, the rental housing has been given a bigger push than it has been in the past. Okay. And what about the 100% FDI that has been opened up? That's also positive for real estate. That's also positive. So I think uh, lots of this investment, so that would be alternative to a REIT. So an FDI could come in terms of an investments into things and a lot of FDI has been coming. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Blackstone has been doing it. Uh, Brookfield has been investing. Other funds have also been investing through the FDI route. 
for the purposes of completed commercial projects. But now it's available to every real estate star or project. So I think that's a positive uh, route direction in which these investments are taking place. And that's a very positive sign because uh, in India, our real estate has a dearth of capital, dearth of credit, dearth of debt. So all these factors will become extremely important to help the real estate from coming out of the difficulties that it is going through. We spoke about you know debt and uh, the the credit for real estate. Real estate, you know, you've been part of Naredco and you have been making a lot of presentations also. One time debt restructuring has been a constant demand for re from real estate. Why is this so important? Well, whenever uh, whenever the markets go through a severe downfall, as has taken place in the real estate field. But it's now not only about real estate. It was only for the real estate that the one-time restructuring was required. But today it's required for every industry because the entire gamut of industry is requiring restructuring. So our representation originally from Naretko uh, has now been also done through Asocham, where I'm the president, and also now supported by Mr. Uday Kotak of CII and Sangeeta Reddy of uh, Fiki. And all of them have now supported the cause of doing it. Uh, this morning, I read also that Mr. Deepak Parikh has also supported this issue in terms of uh, asking for a one-time restructuring because there is no alternative. You can't just extend time for payment. All these project requirements change from time to time. And if the restructuring is done, then and only then will we be able to concentrate on our work and business rather than what is going to be the position of repayment of debt or credit which is taking place. Thank you. So we'll come back to you know, other uh, suggestions uh, later on. But as of now, what is your assessment of home buyer sentiments? You know, are they waiting well, for... Well, home buying. So in the last uh, two weeks, we have had good uh, sales have started. And lots of people, uh, uh, including my Thane project, people have bought flats. And uh, new people and buyers are getting into the buying mode in terms of the apartments. Some of them also invested into new constructions, uh, but many of them are ready for the ready to move in flats. There is a good demand in terms of interest. And now we are hoping these will convert into much more in the near future. Okay, so, so the intent is there, confidence is there, and we uh, see the sales also picking up very soon. Um, and again, on, on this point, like what you said about one-time debt restructuring, what would be your top three suggestions for the government to actually kickstart the real estate and the economy? Because as you have all, all you know, every time you say there are allied industries, more than 230 allied industries which are dependent on real estate. So if we are kickstarting real estate, we are also actually kickstarting the entire economy. What would be your top three suggestions for the government? I think uh, number one would be the one-time rollover. The second suggestion would be that uh, we would need uh, a kickstart for demand in the economy, overall demand in the economy, not only real estate. So we would ask for a, a waiver of GST or a 50% cut in GST for the next six months in order to kickstart the economy. So people should buy mobiles, they should go out to, uh, uh, to purchase things, whether they buy clothes or they buy other uh, items of things. If you bring down the GST, then there will be a kickstart, knowing that the GST will be then restored after three months or six months. So there would be a kickstart in terms of a demand. So I think demand kickstart required by cutting GST is the second suggestion that I can make. The third suggestion is availability of credit. Uh, while government and RBI has done a good amount for the purposes of SMEs uh, and small manufacturers for purposes of giving credit, which is guaranteed by the, uh, the central government. Uh, so there's no worry about the, the banks for them to give it. You also need to give it to other industries, whether it is real estate, whether it is hotels, whether it's restaurants, whether it is uh, clothing, other textiles, whatnot. All the other businesses also require credit availability to be given. So I think availability of credit should be made more liberal in the economy for the purposes of 
restarting the business or kickstarting the business or adding to the working capital requirement, payment of salaries and all these things. Correct. That's true. So uh, lastly, on a concluding note, what are your business strategies for Hira Nandani Group for now and for you know, near future? How are you looking at it? Well, we continue to do what we always do, which is build townships. So we have townships in uh, Pawai, Thani, Panvel, Alibag, uh, uh, Chennai, and we're looking at other projects also in terms of projects, in terms of townships. The second thing which we have done is actually to do industrial townships and warehousing, which uh, we have now started in uh, Pune at Hinjwadi, and uh, sorry, at Taligaon and in Chennai and Nasik. And we plan to do other centers, which is the warehousing and logistics. The third thing which we are working on is, uh, is which we have started is Yota, which is the largest uh, data center park in Asia. So we have now done, we have just started that and it started operating at Panvel. It's another business that we have done. My son is also in the energy business and there would be a completion of their pipeline and gas will be delivered in India at uh, a requirement. So if you will have more energy friendly, uh, 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 gas is more energy friendly, environmentally friendly energy source, which would be available to the country at a much lower price. So all these are diversifications which the Hiranandani group are continuing to do but it continues with the parent business too. Um, very positive uh, you know, strategies and you know, uh, pipeline of projects that you have mentioned today. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Iran and Dani, for sharing your thoughts. Any uh, suggestions or any uh, you know, advice that you have for our developer community? No, I think uh, you have to uh, take care of lives. You have to take care of livelihoods. So while you take care of your health and keep safe, wear your mask, keep distancing, be careful, don't get exposed to quickly, and uh, we'll have to sooner or later get back to work, which we do. And uh, the, the earlier, the better. But we have to see that our discipline is maintained. We are not a very disciplined race and as people and i think the more disciplined we are the easier it would be to fight this problem so i think it's a positive sign in terms of uh, following the prime minister's thought in this direction and if we all do the same and take care of the present which is humongous task to actually take care of the present crisis i'm sure there will be a better tomorrow so like we you know it's a saying that every dark cloud has a silver lining so according to mr hiran and Nani, this pandemic also has brought some positives you know probably making real estate much more technology oriented now will be more disciplined i think now from our, our, you know going forward and uh, we are going to see the real estate probably government as you mentioned you have already made a lot of representations to the government and government has on its part also done a lot of uh, you know new initiatives so uh, all in all i think we have a growth story ahead for real estate and uh, when we have developers like mr hiranandani leading the real estate sector we can hope for better thank you mr hiranandani for being with us and sharing your thoughts and giving us your time thank you so much thank you thank you